Uh, hey everyone. Um, today with the open hearth, um, as part of our continuing series playing various role-playing games in Silent Falls, the background for Alice is Missing, we are playing this little game, The Station by Paige Sorensen. Uh, it's a lovely little uh, zine, like 16 A5 pages uh, about a train station uh, and the people who are getting on the train. Um, and, you know, Sun Falls is a train station, so we're fitting this in. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Donna, my puns are he, him. I guess I'm not playing any character tonight, so that is my introduction. Uh, but I'm really excited to see how this game goes. And I'll pass on for introductions to our next player. Uh, I'll pick on Mark. Hi, I'm Mark. I use he, him pronouns. Um... And I, I also uh, am not playing a character um, unless the train. Can I play the train? Is that an option? I'm not sure anyone owns the train. The train <laughs> is like a shared um, entity. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. And I am L. My pronouns are she, her. I'm also not playing a character or train this session. <laughs> Um, but I'm excited to try out this uh, this little game. Looks fun. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I guess um, maybe I could read some intro text. Um, yeah, let me read some intro text of the game before I draw a card first time. For a long time, no trains have stopped at the station, but change is in the air. Soon a train will arrive, and when it does, the game will end. We're going to talk about the impacts of places and people on each other. We're going to collaboratively answer prompts to discover characters, the station, and the train, uh, which may or may not be sentient. I don't know how far we're going to go. Um, so let me let me draw the first card and uh, see what it is. So just drawn the six of spades. Uh, I have the book, so I don't need to jump back and forth. Uh, the six of spades um what part of the train is not functional i don't know how dingy we can go i i commute on the train regularly um breaks we've got into adventure <laughs> action movies um uh my question is, if the train goes below 50 miles an hour, will it explode? Or if it goes to 88 miles an hour, will we go time travel? That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, but no, what I am actually <laughs> what I'm actually thinking is that um, uh, the um, uh, Whatever you call the, the 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 car, the carriage of the train, where everyone gets their you know coffee and snacks and meals. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you call it over on that side of the world. Um, the cafe car. Yeah, cafe car. What do you okay. call it? Uh, I mean, we don't have those on commuter trains, you know, and we rarely wow. have those anymore, you know, because we don't go very far here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh let's call it the cafe carriage uh is uh broken um i think like maybe what we see on board the train you know as it's making its way to the station uh empty is you know a very uh under pressure a uh, train worker trying to fix the coffee machine, um, which is really the heart of any cafe. Um, and yeah, starting to lose patience with this uh, coffee machine. I think we are um, a short time span away from uh, it, you know, violence being used on this on this poor uh espresso maker um yeah maybe maybe there's more things that are wrong in this in this uh cafe but 
the coffee machine is getting the brunt of the attention. Uh, what do we think? Is there anything, anything more about this we should answer? Or anything more about this you're wondering? How uh, how are the um, the passengers dealing with the fact that they don't have any coffee? Are they keeping it together, or is that the kind of question that's appropriate? Yeah, yeah. So I guess if we're, we're establishing there are passengers already on this train, right? So the which is fine. Maybe maybe this is the first incoming train to Sound Falls in a while. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think maybe there's a, a a queue of people who are holding out hope. You know, and not liking this at all. And I think that we get, you know, we certainly get uh, a sense that there are people on the street who have given up. You know, maybe not in life, but, you know, on their, their prospects of getting coffee. Um, maybe both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if a, you know, if a um, a train passenger can enjoy their coffee, you know, what is the point of continuing? Okay. Is um, this employee who is uh, kind of reaching their wit's end with the coffee machine? Are they the only one like is it kind of a one-man job um yeah i mean i think certainly the 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 task of fixing the the coffee machine is all their responsibility i think there's maybe a second employee who is fulfilling any other order probably you know andy or like stuff that just needs to be taken off the shelf, right? But um, yeah, and I think obviously, because there's only one person, they're probably working quite hard. And and every person who comes to the queue, the top of the queue asks, you know, for coffee. Is he offering tea as a replacement? And I mean, where does that, get that, that that would seem like a, a very sensible suggestion in my <laughs> world, but uh, um, but yeah, is a is a tea bag and boiling water uh, really going to cut it? But I don't know. No. Uh, I mean, I, I I assume the the usual customer service nightmare is that if you offer them tea, they will definitely tell you that if they had wanted tea, they would have asked for tea, you know. Okay. We think is that. Like that is give us a sense of things. Okay. Um so yeah, who wants to draw the next card? Uh I can do it. Okay. Okay, we've got a jack of diamonds. Describe a misunderstanding about the station or the train. Interesting. A misunderstanding about the station or the train. Okay. Um, I always like for things to be a little spooky. So I want to say that kind of piggybacking off of what we just established in the cafe car, um, I think there's a sense among the the employees, the people that kind of deal with this train every day, that things 
don't work properly sometimes or they're falling apart simply because of like the age of the make and model of this train um you know it hasn't been it's maintained but not well maybe um and they sort of chalk everything up to to its age but in fact as like the camera sort of pans through uh, the many cars of the train we see the people the passengers kind of going about their day like taking their their sad teas to their seats or whatever um we see a second group of passengers sort of ghostly translucent kind of like um living their own sort of black and white overlaid lives in perpetuity on this uh commuter train the same day over and over again and uh, when we pan back to the cafe car we see like a a ghostly employee like a third um behind the behind the serving counter um who as the living employee is trying to fix the machine is also like kind of messing with the mechanism um and that's the reason why it's breaking it's like these two these two sets of people who are unable to perceive one another each trying to to live their life and like getting in one another's ways um in these kind of like small imperceptible ways I hope that wasn't too much. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, haunted, you know, a new, a new level of hell. <laughs> I mean, as an analogy for, you know, modern existence and... Forget it. Um, yeah, I mean, do people make jokes about the night shift, you know, or or something like that, or is everyone like absolutely oblivious to this this other layer of reality? Ooh. I wonder. I wonder if most people like the vast majority of people are completely oblivious but there's like a small number of people like this um a small faction of some kind who are aware of the train's haunted quality and have some are able to tap into it for some reason i don't know exactly where i'm going with this but i like the idea of like a small minority of people who know exactly what's going on with this train and are using it for some other purpose mm -hmm. okay yeah awesome uh mark do you want to draw a card All right, so we're not taking any cards into our hands. No. Okay. All right, it is uh, the Jack of Hearts. Okay. Describe a character's motivations. Um, so, so uh, let's see. So just to clarify, the um, unless it seems like a, a slam dunk, we should be describing characters who are waiting for the train in Silent Falls. Um, perfect yep yep okay awesome yeah. thank you for that um i think i'm going to reference um one of our characters not our characters but one of the npcs from this last run so let's see rowan what do we remember about rowan he's a He's a creeper. Um, I'm looking for, oh, there he is. Um, mysterious issues in the archive. Okay, right. Um, describe a character's motivations. Um, Rowan didn't die, did he? I don't think so. During the course of the last hunt. 
I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Um, Rowan is um. Rowan is waiting for his um for his girlfriend to arrive uh on the train and he is um he's got a problem because he needs to cover up the fact that he has been uh she's visiting sorry the girlfriend is visiting uh that he has been uh obsessing over um Sarah who was the Oh, come on now. Sarah must have been one of the she's one of the characters. I can't remember what her deal was. Was she the um the director of the of the film? Um the director of the film was Luna. Oh, no. He was I'm sorry. He's been obsessing over Shanna. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh right. So um Puckett's character. So uh he has to cover up the um the fact that he's been doing that and he has kind of gone through and taken down all of the photos and so forth that he has uh had up of Shanna. And he's um locked them in a file cabinet in the in the basement. So um he he's not totally into having his uh girlfriend arrive and visit. And he is um, hoping to get her out of town as quickly as, I, as he can. Uh, he's thinking maybe he can just have her stay on the train and go to the next, go to the next station. Uh, he's trying to figure out some kind of pretext to do that. Does that answer that question? Yeah. Um so he like he is leaving town I guess for for like this day trip or this kind of weekend away. Is that what So I... he's actually staying in town is yeah. the way that I was thinking. His girlfriend is arriving on the train to visit him in Silent Falls. And he's had to hide all of the um evidence of his weirdness. Right, yeah. Um, as he's waiting on the platform, how do we know that even now uh, his thoughts are consumed by Shanna? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Um, uh, um. He has, uh, from from the time that we visited him in his house, um, he has a, a Shanna hair that uh, that he recovered after we left, and he is he's winding it around his index finger, and um, thinking thinking about her. Yeah, he has a creep. Sorry, Puckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess Shanna doesn't need anybody bothering her, but there it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, anything else? I think I think that's a great following question that uh, gives us just about enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. thank you yeah okay so yeah let me let me draw another card uh ace of hearts uh so uh this is our first train progression card uh this gets me three points to spend on other stuff uh when we get to the game end uh hooray for me um the prompt is uh who first re received news about the train's impending arrival um so i think 
And I'm just going to look at our cast of characters. Um, I think we see uh, yeah, I think we see uh Ollie Goggins, um this young kind of high well, not a high school age anymore, but like still living those glory days of um of high school football. Um and uh, I th it's like scrounging for a ticket or or at least for the cash to get a ticket around. Uh, and it's like you know well how much will how far will this get me is kind of the the questions uh, that he's putting to the station master and then like from like a, some kind of a, a radio or some kind of communication device with like the main station. Uh, he hears the, the garbled voice of the conductor or the engineer on the train to say that, you know, they're, they're like hitting some, um, some waypoint on the trip and they'll, they'll be, they'll be there shortly, you know, a little bit behind schedule, but, but not not too bad. And yeah, I think uh, Ollie's um, yeah, he's like getting a getting a ticket that will will get him out. But really, he's not ending up going very far. Uh, if only he had an extra twenty bucks, uh, he might get somewhere that's on the map. Um, any questions about Ollie or? Yeah. Um, if Ollie did have the money, if he could, you know, spend whatever it takes to go oh. wherever, um, to like whichever destination he wanted to on this train, yeah. uh, where would he go? I think um, he would like to get to like Portland or something like that, somewhere, somewhere that people don't know him and have no expectations. Somewhere maybe he can start over maybe reinvent himself. How does that sound? Sad. <laughs> Yeah, why why is he leaving again? Why does he want to leave town? Just because he has no prospects here? I think maybe um I think maybe he feels like everyone everyone knows what his deal is and he has no prospects here because everyone pigeonholes him. So he just wants to get away from that. He wants to escape the kind of um the options uh, that you know a uh, high school football star has, yeah. you know. I have one more question about it. Um. My When Ollie was in high school, 
um, at the peak of his life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where did he think he would be? Or like, not physically or geographically, but like in life. Yeah. Um, where did he think he would be by now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think he must have assumed that everything would just work out magically, right? That it'll be fine. You know, everyone says, don't worry about it. Just worry about the big game or the state final or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, you won't need to worry about your 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 normal life because you'll be golden, right? So I, I think he was that naive. He just kind of believed that, thought it would be easy. And uh, I don't think it has really earned us that way. Poor guy. I mean, he didn't get sacrificed, right? So he's got that going for him. I mean, we can play that game another time. <laughs> uh, the, the ga that game is Solstice by Tanya Floker. It's on the list. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, I, he, was the, uh, he was the main actor, right, in the student film and uh, he, he was he read ahead in the script and he discovered he's gonna be sacrificed yeah, 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 yeah. okay but, but maybe he'll return you know when we uh when we get to the final checkout right yes. Uh, how old do you wanna? Do you wanna? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you got yeah. another question? Oh no, no, no! I'm fine. The the prosecution rests. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's guilty, but you know, maybe. <laughs> I'll pull a card here. Um, seven of clubs. What doesn't belong in the station yet fills it? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to look at our bump in the dark keeper to see if there's anything to inspire me here. I mean, there's a big cast, but. There's a what? There's a big cast, right? Kathleen, the uh Yeah, that's our Oh cast, right? yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's the that's the first thing I saw when I flipped back to the, the, good. the sheet of NPCs. Well she does not belong in the station. Yeah. I mean she doesn't belong in the in the bar either, but you know <laughs> <laughs> it's never stopped her. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think the station is um a sort of hangout for people who describe themselves as, you know, skaters and um you know artists. But maybe are viewed by others more as like burnouts and ne'er do wells. Um, but I think, yeah, you on any given day, you might see um, the Nelson brothers just, you know, hanging out, uh, like backs leaning against uh, one of the outer walls of the station, um, surreptitiously smoking joints that they, um, you know, stub out uh, if. 
if the sheriff or one of her deputies happens to be passing by. Um, yeah, they like when the trains, uh, you know, not scheduled to come anytime soon, they're like, you know, uh, doing tricks on the tracks, they're grinding on the rails of the station. Um, they make this place their their playground sorts. Um, is is like this so if the maybe this is like a new service so like the trains are more frequent now or like more more attention is on the station do we think this is like the the last day they have this amount of freedom on the tracks yeah i think so um maybe even maybe it's like um because they know this is the last day there's just sort of mm, ceremony is putting it to <laughs> to uh low out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they're having like like they've gotten all their buddies together and you know um they're all like taking advantage of this like last day of freedom before like they'll be you know forced off into some other like seedier part of town to do their their tricks and their their drugs and um you know exercise their freedom yeah awesome Mark, any any follow on questions from you, or do you want to draw a card? No, I think that was brilliant. Um, I, I like that word. Is I'll draw a card here. Oh, oh, I didn't draw two, did I? Um, no, the seven of clubs was, was that was ours, right? Yeah, the seven of clubs was just us, yeah. All right. The ace of clubs. Well, look at that, Al. I get three points. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm in third place. You're going to have to catch up. Uh, <laughs> um, has this place always been a train station? Ooh, delicious. Um No, um, it was not originally a train station. Um, but when the railroad came through, they um, they converted this because it was in a convenient place. Uh, so yeah, what is the what is the que the question is what was it previously? I think. Um, and how? Which direction do we want to go? Um, so it falls. It was a. Do we have, do we have stuff like. In this Silent Falls, do we have the the mining company Grand Sutil? Yeah, there's um, uh, I guess there's a sawmill, and then there's the old silver mines, which yeah. are spent. Uh, riddled with, and there's strange caverns up there that the kids have been warned not to go to. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess either of those two would be uh, good, good prospects for for what you're thinking, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to decide which direction to go. Um, I think that it. was uh a <laughs> um it was a former mansion from the 19th century and um it had been um it had been abandoned by the by the uh silver mining company executive uh for a for a, a 
a better mansion that they built on a hill and um so it was reconverted oh no yes so it was a former mansion um and there was a uh, a terrible massacre that took place in the mansion uh the entire silver mining family was uh i'm sorry the executive's family was killed in the mansion uh and so no one wanted to live there after that and when the train was coming through it was convenient to put the tracks by the mansion and they uh converted the mansion into the train station train stations haunted i mean everything's haunted right al yeah i mean do, do we do we think obviously if the train didn't run here at the time uh it, the ghosts on the train can't be the ghosts from the massacre unless you know who said realism has to be uh, has to work like that <laughs> Um, yeah, I always like the idea that, like, if they are the same ghosts, then, like, the ghost of this family um, in their kind of, you know, hazy perception of their afterlife, like, believed that they were boarding this train to, like, escape their, their would-be killers, whoever they might have been. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's cool. That's so delicious, yes. That is fantastic. I mean, if only there were people here who, you know, uh, would would ride a bump in the dark hunt based on this single prop. <laughs> oh, if only. No if pressure. Only. No, pr <laughs> no pressure. Sorry, I was talking about you, Mark. Yeah. Oh yes. No. No. <laughs> no. I know where that's going. That's, okay. You're fantastic. Um, you know, sound falls all murder all the time, you know, uh, uh, amazing. I, I guess we have a prequel game to play one way or the other. Um, I, I was sorry to, to, uh, to tangent. Uh, I was just the other day talking about the desperation game as a possible prequel. Uh, you know, it's this kind of. Victorian-ish era horror story game by I can't remember is it Evil Hat, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, Jason Morningstar and the Light Pulpit. Right? Ah, yeah, 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 that's them, that's them, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two play sets, and they both work really well, I think, for Silent Falls, the, the Silent Falls we know. Um, sorry. Anyway, uh, anything more you want to add to that, Mark, or have we mm -hmm. reached? maximum levels of deliciousness with that prompt. <laughs> I liked it. I think that's good where it is. Uh, okay. Uh, so I guess it is. Uh, is it me or is it time for a break? I think it's time for a break. And we've pulled the two aces. So we're going to have to assess, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you're back, and I'm going to draw another card. Uh, the Four of Hearts. Uh, ooh, whose life depends on the train's arrival? Wow. Just notch the uh, drama up a tad there. Mm. Let me think. Um, I don't know whether to take this absolutely literally or to have it like in this character's worldview slash state of mind right now. It's a life altering uh, aspect. Um, Um, hmm. 
whose life depends on the train's arrival. Um, yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, or yeah, I think if the train arrives on time <laughs> or remotely on time. Um, but who who do I need to? Ch okay. I mean, I don't wanna I don't wanna kill a uh, an NPC, but I guess that's that's where I have to be. <clears throat> um. I think yeah I think Georgie Hale's past has cut off with them and there is someone on this and like obviously this this man's name real name isn't Georgie Hale uh not really uh but they they have finally tracked him down um and when the train arrives they're gonna make short work of his his cover um and i think his his mma skills are not really gonna go too far against the people who are gonna arrive um We think is that um, spectacular enough? I mean, I want to know what Georgie did that sent them on the run in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, um what did he steal or not do uh i mean is it is it as like cliche as the mob or is it something something worse i mean uh, i kind of want to put a fantastic element on it right yeah yeah um i mean if if we want to go uh if we want to in introduce a threat Maybe we see this uh, on the train, reading the newspaper, because that's what people did on the train in the 1990s, you know, no one's on their phone. <laughs> um, we see a, a very well-groomed young man um, who, um, like, bumps into a ghost sitting next to him reading like the 1890s edition of the Silent Falls um, uh, paper and he says excuse me right uh, to the ghost um, I think um, I, I, I'm gonna ramp this up I think like the ghost is obviously discomforted by this nudge. And then I think we see this like spot where uh, the elbow went into the rib cage, start to like decay and be eaten away and like slowly disintegrate. Um, and this guy like smirks. That's great. Um, Mark, do you have any questions? I I don't. It's it feels so good. <laughs> it feels so perfect for it. Um. Uh. W uh. Will I? 
I mean, my, well, I, I think I should expose my thought process. I think yeah. this is, uh, sorry, Al, this, this will go over your head for a moment, but then I'll explain. This is Mr. Steiner. So the, the Alice is Missing Monster Hearts uh, guidance counselor, who is like the heart of darkness that infects the town. Holy shit. That's awesome. That's that's fantastic. I wish I had played Monster Hearts in this setting. Oh, that sounds really cool. Uh, I, you know, we can always return. You know, there's always year two, you know. <laughs> this is true. Um, all right, I'll draw a card. Ten of clubs. What is the station's name? It used to be owned by this mining executive, mining mogul who was murdered. I think I think maybe it's called the Silver Lodge or like Silver Lodge Station. Um I think that perhaps the main area uh like the the waiting area of the train station um used to be a sort of um what would it be called it used to be the place where this mining mogul uh showed off his like hunting trophies and he used to sort of affectionately call this wing of the the mansion that's now been converted uh the silver lodge and I think even now um, there are sort of remnants of that that previous use here. Um, like when you walk into the station, um, the first thing you see above the the timetable uh, is, you know, uh, not a bison head, like a like this giant deer head with like the antlers uh, sneaking out um, on either side. Yeah, trophy trademarks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I was thinking to myself, okay, how do you make this uh, something juicy? <laughs> and there it is. Anybody can do it. You have any any following questions, Mark? Or are we I think it's juicy enough for me at least. Yeah. Um Yeah, no, that, that's good. Wait, uh, you're up next, so. Okay. Uh oh. The King of Spades, huh? Describe the train with an adjective that is not haunted. Um, describe the train with an adjective
Uh, I mean, I think in a nod to Bump in the Dark, doomed. I mean, we're not going to let you away with a single word answer here, though. Are <laughs> That's we it. Donna, I'm <laughs> reading the instructions. Um, yeah. So, um, how would we flesh this out? Um, I mean, uh, doomed in a and all who sail on her kind of way, or is it yeah. you know a train to hell or? Ooh. So I think it's not literally a train to hell, but taking passage on this train um, is like, it's bad luck. It um, it has longer lasting effects than one might think. It, um, I mean, basically it's like, it's the final destination. I've never seen any of the final destination movies, but what? it's like, I know. It's the final destination plane, right? I mean, sure, you survived the train ride there, but then things get interesting. You don't want them to be interesting because it's bad. I think it dooms the passengers uh, in one way or another. In, in Bump in the Dark terms, they all mark doom. <laughs> Um, I have a bit of a leading question. Go. Um, how is, was it Mr. Steiner? Um, how is he inextricably linked with this quality of the train? Is that a legit question for me to ask? It's so great. Okay, cool. Holy smokes. Um... Now, if you folks have ideas for this, feel free to toss them out. Um, I mean, I would like to hear from you, Mark, because other otherwise I'll have my my GM hat on, you know, from, <laughs> from having had Mr. Steiner be my villain in a in a past series. Uh, well, I mean, what you have to say will probably be interesting. Um, I mean, I'd like to hear it. If you care to share it. Okay. Uh I yeah, I wonder if I mean in, in some way my my real thought is Mr. Steiner killed that family in the eighteen nineties or whatever. He, he is that killer. He's the one who set this whole kind of train thing in motion. I that's I love that. Um yes, yeah, I love that. Back then people just called him the conductor. <laughs> <sighs> Worst villain name ever. Because he also like conducted the high school orchestra, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I have all sorts of questions about Mr. Steiner, but I, I fear I fear that's not the game. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, there are a lot of heart prompts left. Uh are those the ones about people? No, they're not. Oh, well, some of them are. Uh, do, do you think I answered your question, L, in a very final way, or? Yeah, no, I think for now that's that's enough for me. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so let me uh, draw next card, Queen of Hearts. Didn't we promise some hearts? Uh, describe a character's appearance. Um, well, this is a very normal normal question, right? Um, uh, 
And um, yeah, I think I think we see Luna at the far end of the platform. Uh, Luna Staples is the student cinematographer. Um, and she has set up this camera facing like down the tracks where this train should appear. And I mean, we, we know she is has been exposed to the weirdness that some cameras have in this town. And I think, I think maybe I mean, on a timeline, I wonder if this is like before the events that we saw in our in our last hunt. So maybe this is like her first encounter with the supernatural on camera. You know, she, and like we see her, you know, the, the blood has gone from her face. She's looking at, um, looking through this old camera that she got from the library. Um, and, you know, seeing, seeing ghosts like waiting to get on the, uh, on the train. Uh, maybe she's seeing, uh, some kind of remnant of their bloody mur murder you know, on on the south veranda, which I guess is what the platform is now, right? Um, so, you know, uh, ashen-faced, um, almost faint. Uh, Yeah. Uh, is she trying to capture this through this camera? I, I no. I I think, I think this might be just like a student project for, mm -hmm. like, you know, hey, capture this like first service of the whatever, and you know, it'll be a a cute little documentary. Um, but she's like seeing seeing the ghost appear uh, uh, on on camera, you know, obviously for the for, for the first time, right? Okay, okay. I'm assuming that this that the equipment that she has cannot capture that the the photos of uh, cannot capture the ghosts. She sees it through like the viewfinder or the lens or whatnot, but I guess it would be a lens. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe it's not recording them. Like she only yeah. sees us. Yeah, yeah. So like maybe she thinks, you know, at a later stage in the cold light of day, hey, I that was really crazy what I imagined, you know. Um, but right now, like it's kind of terrifying. Um, despite her terror in the moment, what does she see through her viewfinder that, like, sticks with her and, like, makes her want to, you know, learn more about these things that she saw? That's a great question. I mean, I think she sees uh, 
she sees Mr. Steiner like walk out of the building to grab one of the the poor unfortunates who are about to be murdered, like in this ghost field. And he looks down the platform at her. And I don't I don't know if if like maybe he makes some kind of sign that is like very modern or he does something that seems very out of time to her. Um I think that yeah, I don't think like he like definitely she knows that he's he sees him or anything like that, something that would be definitely terrifying. I think it's something that you know prompts this curiosity, like Hey, did people really do that in the 1890s? If I believe what I saw, you know, um, does that make sense? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, should I draw the next card? Uh, yeah, yeah. Six of hearts. Who is obnoxiously counting down the time until the train arrives? Who indeed? Looking through our NPCs. Oh, I don't know. Oh, um, I think we see, what is his name? Valerie Travis, the fiction author. Um, He's there on the platform with uh, his tweed coat on um, a watch uh, around his wrist that's like far too expensive uh, relative to the advances that he makes um, from the books that he writes. Uh, but like every minute or so, he'll look down at the watch and like grumble loud enough for everyone around to hear uh, about how you know slowly time seems to be passing how you know he has places to be he's very important um and i think what has him so antsy is that um he has an idea for a book about A strange idea that came to him that night about a sacrifice in the woods that would awaken a, a deep and long slumbering uh, ancient entity. Um, he has no idea that soon Luna Staples will have that very same dream. Uh, but he's antsy to get on the train so that he can, you know, sit down um you know, put his headphones on and drown everything out and write down uh, all of the details that are still, like, rolling around in his mind, uh, which came from somewhere unbidden, fully formed. That's all I got. Yeah, super. Do we, like, is he... Do we get a sense that he's like losing like the memory of his dream or is he like scribbling stuff in a notebook or is he does he know for some reason he has to write it on the train yeah i think i think it's a letter like he feels this compulsive need to write it on the train like if he does it on the train it'll come out 
right and perfect and you know he'll make enough money on this next book to cover his lawyer fees from the divorce Mark, do you have any follow-on questions? I I guess um I don't really I don't know if this is interesting. Is there any indication that um through his writing he's manifesting all of this in some way? I mean in in a kind of a Stephen King Dark Tower kind of sense. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar enough to make that judgment. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but like by putting pen to paper or, uh, getting out his portable typewriter, when he begins to document this, is that when the reality of it actually begins to form like the, the dream that, uh, Luna Staples has and so forth? Does he have that? Does he, is there some kind of supernatural power that he doesn't realize he has? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think we see him, you know, scribbling away on the train, and then we got, like, this sort of uh, intercut glimpse of somewhere deep in the, the forest around uh, Silent Falls. Um, something, like, emitting this very low groan from underground, like, it's just beginning to wake up. Yeah, super. Um, I mean, I guess that's what we does that is that what we think happens when Luna starts to to make her film. You know, the the act of this creative effort is like what bends reality or, or something like that. Yeah, I think that that totally makes sense. That that yeah. fits in very well with, with our campaign. Yeah. Um, was that your card, L? I think it was. Uh, that was me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Mark. Right, eight of diamonds is. Where is the situation? I'm sorry, where is the station situated? Um, I guess we've talked about it a bit, but we've got kind of a map, I guess, of the town. Um, I mean, I, I wonder, Mark, if it's like what was there before or what does it overlook, um, which is significant in some way, you know, because mm -hmm. um, we know what the building used to be, right? Right. But like, um, what, what was there before that? You know, why is it such a cursed place? Yeah, yeah, that's that's excellent. I mean, obviously... Uh, it was not built on a native uh, burial ground, so we're going to skip the whole poltergeist uh, approach. Um, but it was a... Um, it was... Uh, before it was a mansion, and um, I don't think this is this is this is maybe a little too rough for what we're looking for here. But it was a um, 
um it was a a small neighborhood of um impoverished folks who had uh established themselves by uh the stream that runs through this part um of town before the um well when the when the silver mine was starting to kick off before the um the ceo had moved here and built his mansion uh and he had the um he had the neighborhood where these uh impoverished folks were living uh raised so that he could build the mansion there and so it does also overlook a stream um that is kind of behind where the mansion was situated so that the stream kind of ran through the backyard grounds of the mansion. Is this acceptable? Does this seem okay to everyone? Yeah. I mean, do you... you think it was as straightforward as, like, just evicting them or buying them out, or is it something darker and more malicious? Yeah. Um... How do we make it darker and more malicious? I guess um, he did not give them any. Uh, you know what? He uh, he established barracks for the mine workers where the families could um, could live. And uh, sent them to that location where they were kind of forced to live communally rather than having their own individual. Um little shanties or or homes and then had it uh destroyed mm -hmm. the, had that town portion of the town destroyed you do you think we have a sense of a name of one of these families like yeah. a, family a family name to uh to go oh <laughs> There's some history there with the yeah, the, the mining family. Like... <laughs> um, there are so many good choices here. Um, should we make it a um? Uh, we could make it a briar wood uh or a um what are some of the other ones we have uh whole well these are all the like alice's missing names mm -hmm. should we go with well the briar didn't we establish at some point that the briar woods have, have a lot of money going back a billion years or something i think that's what um um, I don't recall. I don't recall anything about like a lot of money. Okay, but I, obviously, back in the seventies, they owned the bar, and one of them was like, uh, you know, uh, the local top of the criminal, right? Uh, file. So let's um, yeah, let's make it the Briarwoods. Okay. Does that sound cool to you, Al? It sounds great to me. Okay. Uh, so, so not bloody murder for once, but just you know, <clears throat> cap capitalism and abuse of power. You know, a different a different flavor of horror for us. Uh, okay. Uh, let me draw another card. Uh, King of Clubs. Uh, describe the station with an adjective. They 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 love that adjective, huh? Um, and as we established, I'm I'm fine just to give a one word answer, right? <laughs> one adjective. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna go with 
um, eerie. I think, you know, when, when it's busy, when you're, you're like pushing the envelope on those, uh, uh, skate maneuvers, when you're, you're, you know, when you're being alive in a very obvious way, it's fine. But when you're like sitting and waiting, when you're alone, you know, uh, when it's dark, you can't help but get a sense that something is watching you, that something is planning your demise. Um, which, like, architectural or, like, aesthetic features of the station seem to change and become more eerie in those moments? Um, you think there are these, like, um, like, off the eaves of the roof there's these kind of lattice work um and it's kind of like like this filigree this like strange patterns and stuff and it's very shadowy when when maybe when the lights are off or when like only a couple of lights are on but in those moments and if you look at them long enough maybe you get a sense that they're moving and you know it's just a trick of the light right but may maybe this is a sense that something is in there watching you do you think that there are any parts of the because uh, it's a mansion to start and yeah. converted to a train station are there parts of what was originally the mansion that have been boarded up or made inaccessible to folks so that, I mean, like rooms or, or wings. Yeah. May, um, there's only so much you need for a small uh, train station and may, maybe someone at the time had said, Oh, well, let's turn it into like a hotel or something like this. But that's never happened. <clears throat> so I think the majority of it is boarded up, you know. Um, again, another another place, maybe the teenagers of, of this town dare themselves to go into. Uh, I, I feel satisfied. Should we move on to the next panel? Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Four of spades. <laughs> what has delayed the train? Okay. Hmm. What indeed? Let's see. 
Um, I think that at the last station before Silent Falls, this very palpable, very powerful sense of dread sort of overtook the, the train conductor. Like this feeling that if he moves the train forward to Silent Falls, to Silver Lodge Station, something, he'll be putting something terrible in motion. Um, and I think he eventually over comes that fear because he wants to keep his job and it's irrational um, but he felt it nonetheless and that accounted for a uh, short but um, substantial delay to the train's arrival. Is um is our train conductor a native of Silent Falls, or do you get a sense that they are dooming their town, or is it just a general sense of dread? Mm. I think what kicked off that sense of dread um was the man who boarded at that previous station um who we know as uh Mr. Steiner but who the conductor only knows as a stranger with a an aura to him that didn't feel quite right Mark, any, any thoughts? Oh, again, I think that's great. As you can see, I've become obsessed with Mr. Steiner. I can't stop thinking <laughs> about him. <laughs> Mark, do you want to draw your next card and see where we go? Ten of Diamonds. Some cars were just added to the train. Describe them. Yes. Um, at the last station, Oh, here's a call out for you, L. At the last station, um, two cars full of cattle were added to the train. Um, the the cattle that are in this train seem to be they seem to be in a, in distress beyond what one would expect for um for cattle being transported on a train uh their voices almost seem to call out they almost seemed to call out to the um the rail jacks the people on the train responsible for uh, like the engineers, the conductor, um, in some kind of eerie way. And there is a <laughs> there is a a particularly foul stench that is coming from these cars, um, from these cattle cars, um, such that uh, some of the passengers in the in the next, 
car, which is actually is has some intervening cars in between it, um, are um complaining about the about the smell and the noise that these cattle are making. Um what like unusual like description would people would a passenger give if forced to kind of describe the, the smell coming off of these cattle? Yeah, that's a great question. Um kind of a um almost an electrical fire scent. a burning plastic something along those lines love it no further questions prosecution rests <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so maybe I can draw one more card before a break. Uh, five of spades. What will the train bring? <laughs> um. I mean, struggling not, I mean, there's so much on this train that we're dreading already, you know. Uh, um, I mean, I think I'm in a I'm in a tar my brain is in a target rich environment. I don't know which one to choose. Um you're a long way away from a broken coffee machine. That's that's what I'm picking right now. <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, um, I mean, I guess the question is, is there something else that we haven't seen yet, or is there something particular that I can add to about what we've already described? I think we have to... I guess I'm kind oh. of wondering, um, and you don't have to address this with your, your answer, it's just something I'm wondering. Um, is there any hope for the people on the train? Like, is there... Is there anything that might have a chance of saving them? I'm curious. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Is there any hope for anyone like already on this train or about to get on this train? Um, huh. So we pin the hopes of everyone on a creep, I think. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, I think this train is, brings like one last hope, uh, which is if, Like Rowan admits 
to his girlfriend exactly what's going on. Uh, and bas basically, like, uh, faces his, faces their fears, uh, honestly, then that will, you know, at the at the door when the door of the train opens and and he gives this kind of confessional i think that will maybe disarm the doom what do you think so it's i love it yeah yeah, yeah. It's a question of does he have the does he have it in him to do this? Do they rather? Excuse me. Mm. Okay. So maybe let's take a break. Okay. Uh, so yes, that that was my prompt. Thanks for the uh, the extra help choosing something to arrive at. Oh, um, I guess it's your card now. Okay, let's see what we get. Four of clubs. I feel like I'm getting all of the station cards. I don't know <laughs> what curse has befell me, but. Um, do you want to what? draw a different card? Is that acceptable to you, Dada? I'm not a cop. I mean, <laughs> just to give El <laughs> some variety here. Uh, I mean, really, what El dreams for is a card that gets uh, allows her to answer a question about Mr. Steiner, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Oh man, uh, no, I'm totally what? fine uh, doing this prompt. Okay, uh, okay. It, it's totally cool. Yeah. Um. What does the community hope to change about the station? Mm -hmm. I think that descendants of those families that were displaced by the by the the mining uh moguls family um including perhaps the briar wards but i imagine that there are there were others um in this little settlement that got uh you know torn down to build this mansion that became the station um i think those families have been lobbying for some time um to make the station instead into a sort of um, community center, like something that would sort of redress the harms that were done to, to their ancestors, you know, generations ago. Um, I think these efforts have been going on, you know, on and off for, for several generations now. And you know, it's the sort of thing where the current generation kind of knows it's not going to happen, especially with the new new routes being, um, you know, sent through the station. But it's like a matter of principle now. They, you know, go to the mayor every year and, and lobby for this. Um, do we think that there is, like, like, who's currently at the at the spearhead of of this effort now even if it's even if no one trusts or or even dares to hope that it will come to anything yeah um i think there's a young woman uh oh god names um her name is jane slaughter 
um I think maybe she she goes to the same uh community college, local college as, as Luna. Like she's a she's a like fiery uh college student sort of filled with, you know, that righteous uh uh activism, uh that idealism. Um and you know, while Luna's working on her, you know, documentary project about uh Silent Falls Station, um or whatever we call it, Silver Lodge Station. Uh, Jane um, has been seen, you know, around uh, kind of, I guess sort of doing like a guerrilla campaign against the station, mm -hmm. like defacing little things, like breaking little things, um, you know, sort of uh, a more active and destructive a type of lobbying than maybe her her parents' generation did. Fact. Yeah. Uh, any any questions, Mark or? Well, I feel like I'm, I'm letting everyone down with not enough follow-on questions, but um, I feel like I'm also satisfied with the information here, with uh, with the answers. So I don't think I have anything. No, it's my fault for like writing a novel. <laughs> for everything. It's like, oh, no, it's, it's not on you at all. Brilliant. Uh, so Mark, do you want to draw a card and uh, see where we get to? Let's go. All right, six of diamonds. Um, heck, might have actually turned that Uh, ooh, six of diamonds. Who has just heard about the train? Um, yes. So, who has just heard about the train? I'm going to interpret this as who has just heard about the fact that the train is going to be arriving um shortly and i think that it is going to be some of these things have been percolating a little bit um it's uh it's mark brother mark mm -hmm. Chuchuski. Oh, that's a mouthful for me. Um, he uh, just heard by receiving a telephone call that it is going to be arriving with an important um, person from his order uh, arriving on board this doomed train, uh, a Franciscan, uh, another Franciscan um, who has... Um, was come here to see Brother Mark for mysterious unknown reasons that are definitely not related to anything supernatural in any way. He's just he wants to check in on the St. Vincent de Paul charity shop and see if it's um see why it isn't making money. <laughs> okay, that doesn't make sense, but yes. So uh, I think that we see Brother Mark um, arriving in his um, late 1970s era, um, kind of large, station wagon. It is uh, it's brown with fake wood paneling on the sides and. Um, He's kind of uh, gotten himself together as quickly as he could. Um, he should have had a haircut before uh, this person arrived. He does not look at his best. Um, but we see him uh, arriving and um, haphazardly parking uh, his his station wagon before he starts running over toward the platform. Uh, 
what recent event does brother Mark fear this impromptu visit is really about? That's great, isn't it? Uh, wow, what a great question. Um, I think that um, Brother Mark has been um, sending to his, he's been making requests uh, for certain texts to be sent his direction uh, relating to um, things like uh, historical exorcisms, uh, demonology, uh, things along those lines. And um, he was he was trying to fill out the orders with a, a lot of other uh, kind of texts that were innocuous. Um, but these apparently stuck out to uh, to his superiors. And so they've sent this this other Franciscan to check on him. No, the uh, the chainsaw the chainsaw on your shopping list will stand out even if it's between like a dozen eggs and a kilo <laughs> of flour, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, the Malayus Maleficarum, exactly what a quiet uh, charity <laughs> store. But, um, but I also ordered. Uh, but I also ordered um, how to clean your Bible and yeah, uh, <laughs> and five copies of. What to expect when you're expecting. <laughs> uh, what to expect when you're expecting. And then the you. omen. And then the omen came. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. Um, kudos, kudos for like picking a character we haven't seen yet. Who's for our next hunt? <laughs> yes. Let's let's get them involved. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh all praise free bag, you know. Uh <laughs> I mean that priest is hot. What are you gonna do? That is exactly uh what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll I'll draw a card. Let's see. Maybe we can fit in one last round. Uh, the Four of Diamonds. This, this is the card you really wanted, Al. Choose two characters and establish their relationship. <laughs> oh, killer. No, I want to see what you do with that. Okay. Um, am I allowed to pick Mr. Steiner? No, I should pick uh, pick two of our characters who are at the station. Uh, more or less. Um... I mean, I think maybe we see Brother Mark is, you know, worried um, about his own predicament, but sees Rowan nervously pacing and fidgeting with this lock of hair. Um, and I think maybe uh, maybe Rowan is always coming into the charity shop, like looking for, you know, odd things or things that they know they can get cheaply, um, you know, just rummaging around looking for stuff. And Brother Mark, um, you know, engages in a conversation with him, like, he, he notices Rowan is worried and is kind of teasing out exactly what he's worried worried about. So uh, they have, uh, I don't want to say like a confessional relationship, but like this is maybe the way Brother Mark is approaching this. You know, when you see a troubled 
you know, young man standing on a platform fidgeting, you know, probably reach out is what he's thinking. Um, and I, I don't think Rowan is like pushing him away or anything. You know, he is maybe starting to explain what he's worried about. Maybe not in the I'm I've been stalking someone. It probably doesn't go there immediately, but you know we'll, we'll see. Any any questions? Like that, or we leave that hanging for our end game. I think I'm good to leave it hanging. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Um... Okay, I've got the five of hearts. Choose a character. What does the train mean to them? Okay. Let's see. I think I think maybe I'll go with Dot Johansson, our librarian. Um what does the train mean to her? I think this isn't the first time in Dot's lifetime that like this um, train has been routed through um, Silent Falls. I think this used to be like a, a regular stop for this train uh, when she was a child and then it was suspended for quite some time and it's just starting up again. Um, I think she remembers <sighs> I remembers every year um a group of strangely dressed people would arrive in town on this train. Um, she remembers once as a child on a day when she was allowed to, you know, just roam around and play outside, following those people from the station deep into the woods. Um, but it's strange. She doesn't remember what she saw them do there even like the very next day she couldn't remember like this void like ink had been spilled over the the page of her of her memory um so she always gets this kind of uncanny feeling when she passes by the station um remembering that or not remembering that memory that should be there So we, do we think Dot is coming here to like see if these like 
strangers in their strange garb disembark once more or does she think this will jog her memories or where where is her mind at yeah i think we see her sort of pacing a little a little corner a little edge of the platform um hoping that she sees them again so that she can follow them once more like kind of hoping to retrace retrace that memory and like yeah like fill in this lacuna hmm. in her life so yeah. in her in her mind her hope uh that she'll see them outweighs any kind of um fear that she might have related to them if any i guess yeah, I think it's like it might turn out to be a curiosity killed the cat sort of situation. But um but yeah, it's like this this need to know um outweighs her dread. I mean she's a librarian after all. She's all about cataloging information. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Mark, do you want to go for it one last time? All right. It's the Queen of Spades, which is going to be describe the train's appearance. Does this mean like the way it looks or as it comes into the station? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Ooh, yeah. Let's let's go for the ladder um, as it comes into the station. Um, let's see. So the train is uh, rolling into the station. I think that um, folks who are watching the train um, come into the station as it's beginning to slow and approach. There's almost this like. Um, there's almost like this uh, aurora that is inexplicable that is kind of like gliding across. It's gliding uh, along the side of the train and fading into the distance as the train approaches. Um, and as that kind of fades, there's this... Uh, everyone there has at least this kind of passing sense of dread, regardless of whether they're happy to see the train arrive or not. And everyone processes it differently. Um, for some people, it just feels like, um, uh, boy, I wish I hadn't eaten that. And for some people, it's more of like a um, existential uh, crisis for a moment like um uh, i don't know i can't explain but something along those lines um and i think that as the train finally comes to um a stop almost all of the um all of the people waiting there at the station are collectively holding their breaths as the as the train doors open But there's nothing to be worried about. I'm sure it's all good. Okay. Do we have any questions for, for Mark L? Or, to be or, or anything that you'd like to, any elements that you'd like to add, folks, if anything there, as it arrives? I mean, I think... Maybe what what we see is, you know, like 
one of those ghosts escaping their murder, like jumping aboard as the as the train door opens, like but yeah. before anyone has a chance to to get off. That's excellent. Okay. So, uh, what we do now is we uh, let me open this section of the I say rule book. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, we each have points. Uh, I mean, some of us have have more points than others. Um, this is what we have to spend resolving character stories. Um, uh, everyone has their own pool of points, but if we want to um, combine, if we really want to answer uh, something fully. Um, so you can see um, in the prompt section, there's the, the schedule of costs. So like for five points, we get to fully resolve a character story. Uh, narrating the character as the train arrives and as much as afterwards as we want to. For three, we can resolve a character story, story in a positive way, but only as relevant to the train returning to the station. For one point, we give them an unhappy but resolved ending. If we don't spend any points, we don't know. <laughs> um, we, if we wanted to, uh, yeah, positive, like, what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, I've positive for who, Mr. Steiner? Like, um, uh, the um, the rules also say that if we wanted to resolve something uh, raised by uh, for the station or the train, we could do that as well. Uh, there's no order; people can just say, "Hey, I want to go first. Uh, so, does anyone have any? uh resolutions that they really want to take on uh does anyone have any characters in particular that they'd really like to see resolved in some way like fully resolved the five point resolve. Um, I mean, I, I would like, I would, I would, I would not like to kill Georgie Hale. <laughs> not right now. Um, save that for the game, right? Yeah, save that the for the game, game rather. <laughs> um, uh, I get. I guess um, it would make sense for me to uh, save save Georgie Hale, or at least not kill him, <laughs> right? So. So, but but I think maybe I'm happy to only spend three points on on Georgie. Except I, I'm not going to go positive. I, except in so far as he's not dead, right? That's that's positive. Um. So I think I'll go first. I think we see. Uh, Mister Steiner step off the train and I don't think we know why Georgie is sitting on a bench reading a beat up paperback book but he looks up and just happens to be right in front of the doorway Steiner comes out of and Steiner smiles and says uh, come on, Frank. Let's put you to work. Mm -hmm. 
now Mark is hoping that uh, is wishing that I had killed Georgie Hale, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, interesting. Uh, I'm formulating an idea for Ollie, but it's not like fully baked yet. If you want to go first, Mark. Um. I okay. I'd like to spend a point on Rowan. <laughs> um. I think that. Um. Let's see. Give a character an unhappy but resolved ending. I think that. Um. Rowan, uh, after having sp spoken briefly with Brother Mark. Uh, is is pasting a smile on his face as uh, his as his girlfriend exits the train, and um, you you start to get the suspicion that she's known something's been wrong for some time, and um, as she approaches him. She's giving him a very disappointed look. Uh, she sees the the piece of um, not knowing what it is, but she sees the piece of hair wound tightly uh, around his his index finger, turning the tip of his index finger purple. Um, and you could see the um, the disappointment in her eyes as she shakes her head uh, at Rowan. But she's not going to leave town. She's going to um she's going to she's going to um see see what is happening exactly, I think. She wants to get a handle on that. And so Rowan, I think, feels abashed and um Um, disappointed that he wasn't able to, he wasn't able to pull anything, uh, pull the wool over her eyes, even from the point where she got off the train. Hmm. Can we give her a name? But I guess we'll we'll just see her on screen, right? Do you want to pick a name or? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I thought you were saying yeah. We'll we'll find one later. Um. Her name is um <laughs> I was gonna go for something that rhymes with Shanna, but then I thought, no, that's no, we better not go that way. Um it is uh let's see, we've already got like a Sarah, we've got a um her name is um uh, that's too easy. Uh her name is Mary, uh, Marianne. We'll call her Marianne okay. for now. Uh, Elle, do you want to go next or are you still formulating uh, something? Um, no, I think I have something. It's weird, but I have it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think this is, I'm going to spend all three of my points uh, to resolve Ollie's story in a positive way. Um, I think what we see at first is um, not Ollie, but uh, that ghost kind of fleeing from inside of the lodge on, onto the train. Uh, we see her like kind of spectral black hair trailing behind her. Uh, we follow her as she um, kind of uh, flees to the back of a train car and sort of cowers nervously in a seat. Um, and then like sometime behind her, we see Ollie wandering onto the train sort of oblivious um he also walks to the back and sits in that same seat um sort of occupying that same space as the ghost um 
and this like kind of shiver goes through uh, and uh, something happens like this strange alchemy that's only possible by the power of the train. Uh, we see perhaps like one of the ghosts spectral wounds kind of overlaid over an old scar that Ollie has from a football injury. And we watch as Ollie's facial expression, just like the way, the small ways that his face moves begins to shift and change as the ghost settles into his body and um, sort of feeling out the, the strong football muscles, the large frame. And I think Ollie, who is looking for something new, for some place new, um, he won't find that in the sense that he's hoping for. But I think this new passenger um, in his body will give him a sort of welcome new perspective. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice play on passenger there. But wait till he shows up next week and it's like, oh, there's a ghost. The the the, the crew will say, oh, there's a ghost inhabiting uh, Ollie's body. Let's save him. Oh, no. <laughs> Those people wouldn't do that. Um, no, that was great. Um... So, you... do you want to spend yeah. any more points together? Yeah, I want. I want to spend some points. <laughs> uh, so I, yeah, I think we see Doss, and there's like no, no gaggle of masked strangers, but I think there's like a a young kid or maybe two like jump off and like they're wearing masks from a carnival or Disneyland or something like that. And like they're, they're jumping off and they're like excitedly meeting uh, like one parent who didn't go or something like this. And like, they are going back in their car and like going home, but like God is following them. And I, th you know, and I think, you know, like, not in a creepy way, but like she follows them for a while and then keeps driving. They turn off to their suburb and like she keeps driving into the, into the mountains, into the deep dark woods that she remembers from her childhood. Um, so some, some kind of memory is stirring. Mark, are you holding on to your points for a uh, slam dunk? For Brother Mark here, um, is it... Um, is there any interest or is there any point in playing this as a, a short vignette with the arriving uh, Franciscan and a a third party? That we could do three that we could all interact with or should I just put it on each of you to... <laughs> well um, how about you maybe narrate what you can and then if one of us you know feels uh, yeah. you know feels like we have something powerful to to say through this uh visitor then l or i can jump in 
Sounds good. I think that um, we see them. Uh, we see Brother Mark and the other friar who is Brother um, Paul. Uh, and they are at uh, Brother Mark's um, home, a small house uh, that he has there in town. Now, actually, he lives above the uh, the St. Paul de Vincent um, shop. Uh, and so they are, they're having uh, a cup of coffee uh, at the table and uh, Brother Paul begins to ask Brother Mark about, um, he, he tells him that uh, we're worried that, we're worried about what you have been um what you've been requesting from the order. Um, is there anything that you need to tell us about what is happening here in Silent Falls? And does anybody have a response that they'd like to have Brother Mark give to that question? Or should I just put something out? Al, do you have any any prompts and rattling around? Mm. Maybe this is cheating a little bit, but if we're going to do the hunt um, involving Brother Mark, perhaps he he responds with the hook there, right? The perfect segue into what we'll see later in our bump of the dark game next week uh <laughs> um yeah sorry i should really bring up that um the hook uh because obviously i'm the gm for that and i should know <laughs> <laughs> here's one i prepared earlier um Yeah, I think he says there's something happening in the shrine. I mean, that... Go ahead. No, that's it. That's That feels like my, the, the, yeah. the fade to black for the episode. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That was That was a great idea, Al. Yep. Almost like we're, we're planning this. <laughs> oh, long. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. I'm just recording that. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we should stop the recording and do a quick debrief. So yeah, awesome.